Installing custom firmware on your 3DS is a surefire way to improve your gaming experience. It can help you play whatever game you want, install mods, emulators, and even play online again. So today, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up Luma custom firmware on your new 3DS or 2DS. The method I'm going to be using in this video is called Super Skater Hacks, and it is only compatible with new models of 3DS or 2DS. If you don't know which model your console is, then look for this C-Stick nub right here. If you have it, then you have a new model, and you can continue this guide. But if you don't have the C-Stick nub, well, you have an old model, and we'll have to use a different guide that I will link in the top right of the screen. This guide will be for firmware version. 11.15 and up with the current one being 11.17 and it'll work on any region console so once you know which model you have here is everything you need for the guide of course you need your console and it does have to have an internet connection you'll need a micro SD card which can certainly be the 4 gigabyte one that came with it but I highly suggest upgrading to a larger one as it will give you more space for games and don't worry if you don't have a larger SD now you can always get one later and transfer everything over Along with that, you'll need a way to download and transfer files to your SD card. This can be a PC, Mac, laptop, or even your phone, as long as you can connect your SD card to it. I have this USB to SD adapter to plug into my PC and it works fantastic. All of the products I recommend are linked in the description for your convenience. But now that you have everything you need, let's get started with the guide. Linked in the description will be this Google Doc that I've set up here and it's going to have everything that we need including what you can do after the process is finished. The first thing to notice is the disclaimer. There's always a slight chance to brick your device leaving it unusable so make sure you follow all the steps correctly the first time. Because it's a video guide make sure to read the description and the pinned comment to make sure it's still up to date. There will be no mention or instructions on obtaining software illegally in this video. But of course, happy modding. So the first important link that we are going to head to is the official written guide. So click on this and head on over. And this is where we will be getting all of our files and it's also going to have every single instruction on how to do it. So now before we get started with the download, there's an important step that we must do. So with your console off, we're going to hold the select button and start it and keep holding select until it turns on. And it should bring you to the home menu, but if it did not, you already have custom firmware installed. You might see a screen like God Mode 9 or the Luma configuration menu, and you have different steps because you don't actually have to do the exploit. So if you did not see your 3DS menu, over on the dock, there is a link for already have custom firmware. So just click on that and it'll take you to a page and there are different steps for different versions of Luma. So you'll have to continue there, but you won't have to do the exploit like us. But if you got the home menu, we can power off our device and go ahead and take your SD card out of your console. Even if you're going to upgrade to a larger one like I am. I'm going to save all of my content from here and transfer it to this one before getting started with custom firmware. So if you're upgrading your SD card to a larger one, go ahead and place your old one in the computer. Open up your file explorer and as you can see I have my 4 gigabyte one inserted. Open it up and this is the root of the SD card and if you had it plugged into your 3DS then you should have a 3DS folder at least and possibly a DCIM. But if you don't want to lose anything you have on there, all we're going to do is copy all of the folders in your SD card and place them onto your computer as a backup. So now we're done with the old SD card. I'm going to eject mine. And now I'm going to place the upgraded one in my computer. It is in drive letter E. We're gonna have to make sure to remember that. Your drive letter may not be the same by the way, but make sure to take note of your drive letter. First thing we have to do is make sure it's formatted properly. So right click on it and hit properties. If yours is FAT32 like mine, you are good to go. But if yours is XFAT or NTFS or anything other than FAT32, we need to format it. If your SD card is 32 gigabytes, gigabytes or lower, we can do this through the Windows File Explorer. So on the left side, right click on the SD card, click on format. And then here you can choose FAT32. Make sure it says 32 kilobytes. And before you click start, just remember whenever you format a drive, it will wipe everything. Make sure to back it up so you can put it back on your SD card later. But all you have to do is press start. There is your warning, press OK and it has formatted. Now, if you guys have a 64 gigabyte card or larger, you cannot use the Windows File Explorer. So back on the Google Doc, I have a link for RidgeCorp, which is a formatting program. So we can go there 
and here all you have to do is click on the image and it will download an exe file now i already have this program but just run the exe file it is a giu format it will open up here Make sure your other file windows are closed. Select the proper drive letter. Again, this is why it's so important to remember that drive letter. And just a reminder, yours might not be E, it could be something different. Make sure the allocation unit size is 32,000 and press start. Just another warning, all your data will be lost from this SD card when you format it. But just press OK and it should format. If you get an error, then make sure to have all your file explorer windows closed. And if you keep getting an error, restart your computer. Don't open anything except for this GU format program and then format it. But once it's formatted, press close, open up your file explorer and double check it's FAT32 by right clicking and go to properties and it should be right there. And just a quick tip, I suggest enabling your file extension. So under view, go down to show and make sure there's a check mark under file name extensions and this will make it easier to find the proper files. Now that your new SD card is formatted properly, head on into the root of your SD card. And if you did have an existing SD card already and you backed up your files, now is when you grab that and place it back on. So now that we have all of that sorted out, we are ready to get started with the downloads. So back on the official guide under what you need, Super Skater Hacks right here. Click on it and it'll take you to this page. This is where it depends on your model. So under region, whichever region you are, I'll put a picture on the screen for what the letters stand for, but mine is U for USA. So I'm gonna select USA. And my system is updated to 11.17. So I'm gonna click that one. If for some reason you haven't updated to 11.17, and you're on an older firmware right here, you select that one. Once you've selected the proper options, click download zip and it will download a zip file. We can exit this and then we can minimize that. I'll put my SD card on the right and my downloads on the left. So because it's a zip file, you will need an extraction software like 7-Zip or WinRAR. Those are both free options. But as long as you have that, open up your zip file. We're gonna highlight everything and just drag it onto the root of your SD card where your Nintendo 3DS folder is. And if it asks you to overwrite existing files, then go ahead and do that. But once we have all of that, we can back out and delete the zip file. We don't need it anymore. And this is everything we need on our SD card. It's time to eject and head over to the console. So at this point, we can place our micro SD card inside of our console, start it up. And the first thing to do is go into your system settings Go into other settings, profile, region settings. And now we're gonna temporarily change this setting to increase the success rate of the exploit. So if you're also on a North American region console, you just do what I am doing. However, if you're on a different region, look at the picture on the screen and follow those steps. So mine, I'm gonna go into region settings and I'm going to change mine to United States. And then I'm gonna leave this part on do not set. Press okay. So now my region has changed on the top screen here. So again, if you're on a different region, please refer to the picture that's on the screen right now and make sure your top screen looks like that according to your region. But once you have that all good, we can go back all the way out. We can close system settings. And now is time for the exploit. And how we're gonna do this is a QR code. So we're gonna press the left bumper and the right bumper at the same time to open up the camera. So grab your 3DS, hit the QR button, so your screen looks like this. And then on the guide under section two, super skater hacks, part two is the QR code. So just press here and it'll take you to these images. So go ahead and scan the proper QR code for your region and it should come up with this URL. And if you don't have the option, say your camera's broken or something like that, you can always just type this in yourself. But press okay when it comes up, launch the internet browser. If it's your first time, go through the service agreement. And then it should load this page right here with a go, go picture. But now once you see this page, just hit the select button and then hit bookmark this page at the bottom. Press B on the bottom part of the screen, click the two squares. And if you have more than one page open, as you can see, I have a new page. I'm gonna exit that one so that the Zugi one is the only page open. Tap the screen to get out of it. And now we're gonna press these three lines in the bottom right. Press on settings, delete cookies, tap yes, and cookies are deleted. And now we can press the home button and then just press A again to launch the internet browser again. 
it should open back up to this screen and now we are going to select the GoGo -Go text so press that you can just press a to dismiss the pop-up and it should load through these screens here don't worry this is normal and it should load into the homebrew launcher now if your console froze on a yellow screen hold the power button until it turns off and then retry this section and if it just brings you to a page that says text, then you do not have a new model of 3DS and you have to use the other guide linked in the description. If your console freezes on a red screen, then you need to go back and make sure you bookmark that tab and then try the exploit again. But hopefully you made it to this screen and you should see Nimfax right here and that is what we are going to select. And it should run into the safe B9S installer. So it looks concerning, but don't worry, this is all good and all normal. But once you're on this screen, you should see this key combination here, just run through it. So left, down, right, up, A, and it will do its thing. On, once SigHax is installed, just press A to continue, and it will reboot your console into this menu, which is the Luma 3DS configuration menu. Now in the future of your modding journey, you may need to use this screen, but we are gonna leave it on the default settings. So just press start, and it will save and exit. And then your console should reboot into your custom firmware. And it should just look like the normal menu. So at this point, we have successfully installed Luma 3DS custom firmware. And if you wanna go back into the system settings and change your region back to what you had it before, you can go ahead and do that now. So now we can turn off our system Take your SD card out and then place it back into your computer. So now back on your computer, you should be on the guide. And if you're not, you do need to get to this page. So if you're still at the top and just following the video, that's fine. But just scroll down to the very bottom where it says finalizing setup and click on it. And here is our finalizing page. So what the finalizing part is going to do is basically back up our NAND and install very important homebrew apps that are going to be extremely useful. And right here, it will tell you everything and each app. But of course, at the end of the video, I'll give you a rundown on what each of these do. But you can scroll down to what you need and we are going to download the X underscore finalize helper dot firm. It will be a direct download from that site and then also the finalize ROM FS. So once you have those downloads, it's time to open up your file explorer, open up your SD card, and then also your download. So again, SD on the right and downloads on the left. So the first thing we're gonna grab is the finalize.romfs. Make sure you grab the right file and we're gonna place this simply on the root of your SD card. Hit yes if Windows prompts you. Once you have it transferred over, we can delete it from our downloads. And now is for the finalize helper.firm. Over on your SD card, go into the Luma folder. And if there is not a payloads folder inside, right click and create it yourself. Make sure you spell it properly. Go inside of there. And then we're simply going to grab this file and put it inside. Press yes if Windows prompts you and you should be good to go. And that is it. We can delete the final file off of our downloads. And that is all we have to do for the SD card. We are ready to eject it yet again and place it back into our console. And at this point of the guide, if you are not on the latest firmware, if you would like to update your system now, it is safe to do so with Safe B9S and Luma, which is what we just installed. But remember in the future, if there is an update to the firmware on the 3DS, do not update it until you have checked the 3ds.hacks.guide page to make sure it's safe, as Nintendo likes to break homebrew with their updates, their random updates for old consoles. But next up, we are gonna open up the Rosalina menu. So hold the left bumper down on the D-pad and select, and you should see this screen on the bottom. And if one of those buttons is broken, check the written guide for an option for a different key combo, but there's a different SD setup for that. But once you see this screen, go down to miscellaneous option, go down to dump DSP firmware and press A, press B to continue. Go up one to nullify user time offset and press A. And it should say operation succeeded. Press B, B, B to get back to your home menu. Now we can power off our device. And now hold the X button and turn on your device. And you should see the finalize setup helper script here. And it should automatically load into God Mode 9 into this screen. 
If you're prompted to create an essential files backup, just press A to do so and then press A to continue once it's completed. And again, if you're prompted to fix the RTC date and time, press A to do so and then set the date and time and press A to continue. Press the home button to open up the action menu here. Go into scripts and press A on finalize. Just press A for yes, press A and then you have to run through a key combination yet again. And now it is ready to run the script. And as it says here, it may take up to 15 minutes as this is your NAND backup as well. And that usually takes the longest. So just be prepared for that. And if your console was close to dying, please plug your console in so it does not die during the process. But press A to run the script and it should give you an ETA here. So I will meet you back when the process is successful. And it is just about done and you should see setup complete. If you don't see this page, it was not successful and you'll have to redo this step. But just press A to power off your device, take your SD card out yet again, and back into the computer. So back on your computer, open up your SD card, go into the GM9 folder, backups and this is your NAND backup and if you have modded other consoles you'll know that this is very important in case anything bad happens to your console so what we're going to do is place it in a very safe spot so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a folder on my desktop call it NAND backup 2DS and I'm also going to give it a date October 23rd as you can always update your NAND backup and now just copy all three folders and drag them into that folder on your computer and once that is safely transferred over, you can delete these files here. And if you want, you can keep the essential exefs file. It's pretty small. It doesn't take much. So it's no problem keeping on here. This one specifically has your console's system unique files and can be used to recover your data in the event of a hardware failure. And the other files, these sysnands, these two are your NAND backup and can be used to revert your console to a working state if somehow it gets bricked by a software issue. But once you do that, I do highly suggest backing this folder up to the cloud. Therefore, you cannot lose it. It is very safe. But of course, that's up to you. But now that our NAND backup is in a safe spot, we can eject our SD card and head over to our console. Plug your SD card back in for the last time of the guide. And now we are going to set up our homebrew apps. Turn on your device. And when it loads, we should see some presents. And there we go, new software has been added. You should see this as well. Press OK and let's open our presence. So the first one, FBI. This one is very important because it allows you to install content to your 3DS and those will be in the format of a CIA file. That could be games, apps, forwarders, usually along those lines. Now this one, Universal Updater, it's very important. It allows you to download and update apps directly on your console including updating your Luma custom firmware. This one, Anemone, this is a custom 3DS theme manager and there are tons of themes that you can choose from. So this one is highly recommended to go check that stuff out. FTPD is basically a way to access your SD card wirelessly. So it saves you the step of taking it out and placing it in your computer. Next up, Checkpoint. This is a save game manager, comes in really handy. And lastly, this is your homebrew launcher. So this will hold all your homebrew apps, but again, most of your homebrew apps, you'll be able to play or access from the home menu by installing them with FBI, but homebrew launcher is still important to have. So now you have officially set up everything on your console for homebrew, and now you're ready for your next steps in your modding journey. And I have tons of videos to help you out. So again, there are links on the Google Doc that I have for different videos, or you can check out my 3DS homebrewing playlist. But if you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like the video. It helps me out for free. And it's always nice when you guys comment down below that this guide worked and with the date to let others know that it's still good to go. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>